I welcome all of you to the class. <clears throat> as far as the previous class was concerned, in the previous class, we were trying to focus on the state of stress in a two dimensional case, isn't it? That is, we moved from the process of, uh, we moved from a phenomenon of one dimensional state of stress to a two dimensional state of stress. What I mean by a one dimensional state of stress or 1D state of stress is what I had explained you uh, in the previous class, but I will be very quickly going through it again. In the previous class, as I was discussing about the one dimensional state of stress, we essentially had a machine element, which was in the form of a bar. Okay, and this bar was fixed at one end. Fine. And this bar was subjected to, a, say, for example, a tensile load of magnitude pre P at its free end, isn't it? So under the influence of this load at the free end P, what happens to the machine element? The machine element undergoes the change in length, essentially what we call as the elongation happens, okay? Okay, the change in length happens. So if I assume that initially the length of the machine element was say for example, L. Now the change that has happened is say for example, delta L, okay? This delta L has happened because external deforming load P is acting on the machine element, isn't it? Okay, and once we were taking a small section out of this, we were taking a very small element out of this, out of this bar, and I said that that element has to be essentially in the form of a cuboid, what we call as a stress element, okay? Whatever analysis we do in mechanics of solids, we do that on very, very small cubical or cuboidal elements, what are essentially known as the stress elements, okay? So we usually have what we call as the stress elements. Okay, so if you look at this stress element, if I have extracted this stress element very, very close to the free end, that then at its one end, you will be having a load P acting. Okay, and from the process of equilibrium for this machine element, for this small piece to be at equilibrium, there has to be a opposite reaction force P prime in this direction. Okay, such that P has to be equal to P prime for the process of equilibrium, because once we apply as we will see in the lab as well, once we apply the load, there will be displacement in the machine element. But that displacement is so small that the entire machine element, you can say that it's at rest, okay? Because the displacement is of the order of micrometers, okay? As we'll see in the lab. Now you see, essentially the external deforming load is in which direction? It is in the direction of, we can say it's along x-axis, okay? It's along x-axis. Okay, so we can say that the deformation and the tendency of the machine element to resist the deformation has to be at along how many axes? Along one axis, along which the external load is acting. We call this type of loading condition as a unidirectional or uniaxial stress. We say that this machine element is under uniaxial, it's under uniaxial, uniaxial stress. It has a uniaxial stress, okay? That is external deforming load is acting only along one direction, okay? And the machine element is tending to resist the external deforming load only in one direction, okay? Now, but there are cases where you don't have the unidirectional cases only, where we have n-directional cases, where the stresses are acting on the machine element, not only in one direction, but in n number of direction. For example, you have an aircraft. Once an aircraft is flying, so you have winds coming from all the from wind can come from any direction, okay? So based on the direction of the wind, okay? The wind is exerting some load on the aircraft and you know it's because of that load or because of that force which is exerted by the wind on the aircraft such that the aircraft gets the lift and moves up, okay? So essentially on an aircraft, there is the load which is acting fr from the air, from the, down from the downward side to the upward side. That is that direction of the lift has to be in the upward direction. But it's not only the lift which is acting in the upward direction. As you see, as you draw academical diagrams, you say, say for example, this is an aircraft. Okay, you say the lift force is in the upward direction, but this is quite academical. Academical, I mean to say that this is only possible when only wind will be from the bottom side of the aircraft. But that's not the case. You have wind above it. You have air above the aircraft. So there will be some load of the air 
because of there will be load on the aircraft because of the air above are you getting me or not so you have n number of directions and from n number of directions you will be having n components of the force which will be acting on the aircraft that's why sometimes the air, aircraft will move like this it move like this it slightly starts uh, you know vibrating up and down because you have lots of unbalanced components of force so you have a machine element you have the entire aircraft which is under how many types of load which is loaded in how many directions n number of directions but academically again saying that we do have the cases where a machine element is essentially loaded but it's loaded in two directions for example look at this table okay if you apply the load in this direction okay if you if you sit on it like this or on the bench on which you are sitting are you getting me or not so you are having you have applied some load on your bench and the load is in the downward direction are you getting me or not but if your friend now starts applying the force on you okay on your right or on your left then the same piece of wood of the bench is now under how many types of loads it's under two types of loads are you getting me or not so if you look if you assume for some time how this bench is going to fail this bench is if we are sitting on the bench we are applying our our force is acting vertically downwards then it is possible then the bench cannot withstand the load and it, it breaks like this this is one way of its failure okay another mode of its failure is like you are sitting on the bench okay and your friend starts pushing you in from this direction okay so it is possible that one 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 piece or uh, or the upper surface or the bottom surface one surface will slide over the another surface that's also the failure are you getting me or not so based on based on the load in which in which direction you are applying your machine element can be along at one directional loading condition or a two directional loading condition now as far as the two directional loading condition is concerned how do we show a two dimensional load okay i was trying to explain that yesterday that we'll be mostly talking about an element a machine element it is a small element of your it is a small element that we have that we have extracted out of the entire machine are you getting me on for example let me take up let me take an example of this power okay let me take an this is a this let me take an example of this beam in the class okay so essentially you have a beam like this okay you have a beam like this fine the shape of the beam is so and so it's like this okay this is the beam and above this beam you are having some load and the load will be acting downwards or upwards downwards are you getting me or not? the load will be acting downwards so look we have to do some analysis of this beam what we do we don't do analysis on the entire beam entire beam analysis is never done what we do we take a small element out of it okay of the same shape as the shape of this beam maybe a cube or a cuboid and we do our analysis on that cuboid cuboid that's what we call as a stress element okay in the same way i will take this element out and i will start doing my analysis on it's like a urine test when a person uh, for example urinates in a day say for example 2 liters of water through urine but if he has to go for a urine examination he does not go for urine examination of 2 liters of urine he takes out a sample same is the case with our blood when we do the blood we do sampling are you getting me or not drops milliliters we don't do the blood analysis of the entire blood same is the case with the beam same is the case with mechanics we don't do the analysis of the entire structure we do analysis of a part of the structure and then uh, based on the theories apply that analysis on the entire structure are you getting me or not now uh, okay so if you have a two directional case of loading it it's shown like you have a load acting in this direction let me call that i will not call load i will call now sigma why i'm calling now sigma because load creates sigma stress we are we are interested in stress in the same way in the same way let's suppose we are having stress on this element in this direction let's call this as sigma x okay so i will write sigma and sigma i will write this as sigma let's call this as sigma x okay but i know this sigma x and this sigma x will be same 
this is sigma y stress acting along y direction okay in a bi actual by by stress condition we have stress acting along two direction okay apart from the normal stresses we also have the shear stresses now i ask you the question why we are taking shear stresses here into consideration recall the previous lecture when we are talking about the transformation of the stresses in a uniaxial case because i told you if you have a machine element and you apply the load don't say it is only under the influence of a normal stress because inside the machine element there will be shear stresses and whether the machine element is under the normal stress or the shear stress it depends upon what it depends upon it depends upon the it depends upon the plane of the analysis what's your role number 14 14 you were present in the previous class when we are drawing those planes so on one plane there was normal stress but once we had an inclined plane at you had tau as well as sigma so you had normal stress as well as the shear stress that was cool that for which are cool going pins for you has to put much shukri okay <clears throat> so we have actually i had to take you to the lab today because my lab in mechanics of materials is full equipped lab i had to show you how we do the tensile test so that you could actually see how things fail okay and you could actually you know uh, you could you could at least see how uh, the theory what we are studying in the class is vis a vis with the practical and how things are how things usually fail okay that's very important because in mechanical the failures are catastrophic catastrophic and you say they don't give you the warning they fail they fail you must have seen in, in, in there was a video circulated in of one of the hostels uh, of one of the examination halls in india students were coming out of the examination hall it was a four story building okay so this was the you know the balcony you, you this was the balcony okay uh, it was around 5 feet and after this balcony there was a classroom so you are on the fourth floor there was a grill okay the grill was of the height of maybe 4 or 5 feet okay so as the students were coming they were leaning against the grill like this you must have seen that so when many students leaned against the grill the grill collapsed and the students died you must have seen that it recently happened just 6 or 7 days back it happened okay they felt, you know it was terrific because the video recording was showing that they were the, the boys and girls both were falling from the fourth floor i think the fifth floor are you getting me or not so these are mechanical failures are you getting me so was not the designer knowing what where was the problem where was the issue if you look at those metal barricades or those grills they had the strength but not that sufficient strength to withstand the load of so many students because how many students because the where was the where was the fatality of the design the fatality of the design was the grill was in front of the classroom the designer had not taken into consideration how many students were will be maximum in the class and if you have maximum students coming out and leaning against the wall will it fail or not that's to be taken into consideration or get it wrong there's a regulation that 30 or 7 i don't remember that 7% of the seats in an aircraft should be empty okay but once you travel do you see those empty seats no agar unka bus chale wo shayad ek dusre ke upar bhi bitha denge hai na but they will keep it like this isn't it so you have you the, the, the domestic aircrafts that you have you buy a ticket on indigo or spice jet why these are cheap flights why you have your fares are cheap because your facilities are not there you don't have the sufficient room to open up your legs in a cylindrical pressure vessel you are caged isn't it like that you cannot move around if you start flexing your muscles then the passengers will start complaining about it isn't it so this is how it happens but do you have those seven seats vacant 30% seats vacant no it never happens but does an aircraft fail and then the air pilot all of a sudden says i am very sorry i had to keep my seven seats empty which i have not so we are going to crash does it happen it does not happen so if it does not happen there how it could happen so it means somewhere down the line as engineers the the, the loading condition is to be taken into consideration how this machine element will be loaded okay and if there are more number of failures then it means the company has to stop do you know there is something called 737 neo engine failures you know you don't know you know the indonesia air crash 
you don't know you know air asia air asia crash you know what's happening in the aviation boeing ha boeing is coming up boeing has introduced the dreamliner 737 neo engine which are the world's most powerful and efficient engines but that company is now stuck why because the engine failures are happening okay are you getting me? You, you have this information so now you are having billion dollar industry coming up but one small failure can collapse your entire industry are you getting me or not so i was talking about this loading condition you have to be very very careful about the loads okay so i was saying in a biaxial load case if you take a stress element it will be stressed along x axis and y axis and apart from x and y axis it will also be having the shear stresses which i was yesterday telling you it will be having shear stresses tau we have to do it in much detail but i have to take you somewhere else right now okay just remember for some time as i was trying to discuss it yesterday that on a stress element in biaxial loading condition apart from the normal stresses on its free surfaces there are the shear stresses as well are you getting me or not fine why there are the shear stresses we'll talk about it later on but i remember i if you recall the previous lecture we'll be having a brief um, you will be having some brief idea why there will be the shear stresses now the question is i have a very very important question for you in the previous question in the previous class as i was talking about a unidirectional case i said it is subjected to stress it is subjected to load p and the normal stress is equal to how much p by a but this normal stress p by a is on which face is on this face is on this surface but if you take an inclined surface if you take a surface like this was normal stress is equal to p by a no it was equal to p by a sin p by a p by a cos theta or something else p by a cos square theta was it like that okay and on this plane apart from normal stresses we also had the shear stress tha na pichle class mein yahi tha okay now the question was we had a plane like this somehow we rotated that plane converted that plane into an inclined plane and the question was how much is the stress normal stress and shear stress acting on this inclined plane now my question is this was a case of unidirectional stress now come to the biaxial stress if you have a machine element if you have a stress element it is subjected to stress sigma x in this direction it is subjected to stress sigma y in this direction here you are having some value of shear stress here you are having some value of shear stress which will be given to us okay let me call that as tau 1 and tau 2 now the question is if i rotate this stress element by angle theta if i rotate this stress element by angle theta how much will be the normal stress on this face let me call that as sigma x prime how much will be the y component of stress that is sigma y prime on this element how much will be the shear stress let me call that as tau 1 prime and how much will be the shear stress here let me call that as tau 2 prime how the shear stresses and the normal stresses now transform in case of which type of loading condition in case of a in case of a yeah in in case of a no in case of a by action or a yes in case of a by action stress condition that is jab aapka machine element mein stresses honge along two directions or faces pe shear stresses honge agar aapne is element ko rotate kiya to us element pe shear stresses normal stresses ka value kitna hoga theek hai there are two ways of doing it one way is the mathematics which i will be taking on later on another way is the practical way which is called the mohr circle construction what is called mohr circle so we'll learn how to draw the mohr circle and be careful later on i will show you some questions from the gate examination which are based on mohr circle okay so first of all let me define my stress and bend are you getting no you are not getting are you here okay do you remember me in the previous semester i think we were talking about fundamentals of mechanics isn't it was it tough yes how many of you apply, apply how many of your friends were with you in final exam sitting around you 5 6 no you were alone okay there are some students who have got some good marks but i know their good marks are as good as grass it's all nuisance 
कुछ अच्छे बच्चे थे जिनकी अटेंडेंस अच्छी थी दे गॉट अराउंडीज विच वॉज डिस्कस्टिंग बिकॉज दे वर वेरी ऑनेस्ट ठीक है उनके साथ दे डिड एवरी थिंग विद रूल्स दे डि नॉट दे डि नथिंग हैंकी पैंकी they got the link and they started doing the questions revising the notes and they answered the question they got 26 20 but we had some hanky pankies as well they simply forwarded the question to some agencies in new delhi and they got 38 isn't it some got 40 which is quite horrible the same paper with little modification was also sent to ssm and we were 96% of the students are failing in fundamentals of mechanics i had me two papers one i had set for iot good result i could say around 70 75% of the students are passing good but in ssm you have 96% of the students failing when the count of students is more than 800 only some 60 or 65 students are passing the rest are failing this is something now and i have all affection with those students because i know unko koi mila nahi hoga na wo why they could approach the barber <laughs> they got no one so <laughs> dayan aapke kitne the kam hi the isme sabse acha fayda is roll number 14 ko hai ha roll number 14 is it like that आपको ज्यादा फायदा इस लॉकडाउन का हुआ बताओ आपको रियली एनी वेज वर्क हार्ड गुड स्टूडेंट्स आर गुड स्टूडेंट्स एंड आई ऑल माई एफेक्शन विद गुड स्टूडेंट्स इफ यू आर वर्किंग हार्ड देन डोंट वेरी इफ यू आर लेजी देन चूज अनदर प्रोफेशन ओके let me say let me take a example from your book let me show you pehle hum ek kuch questions karte hain fir concepts pe wapas aa jayenge let's suppose we have a stress element like this dekho beta ye jo course hai na i have already kyunki aap mein se kuch students ne newly join kiya hai as far as my class is concerned this is an open interactive class you can come up with your challenge with discussions this is i have been teaching this course from many years now there is nothing new for me except your questions so i learn from your questions so please and please if you i don't take it as a tough time but i enjoy the questions of students and i learn from you so my classes are open classes don't worry about it but please and please work hard dekhiye ये स्ट्रेस एलिमेंट कहां पे यूज होता है ये हम बाद में देखेंगे पहले हम इसकी ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन को देखने सीखने की कोशिश करेंगे देखो बेटा हमारे पास एक स्ट्रेस एलिमेंट है कितने स्ट्रेसेस इस पे लग रहे हैं सिग्मा एक्स दिस इज नॉर्मल स्ट्रेस अलॉन्ग एक्स एक्सिस सिग्मा वाई इट इज नॉर्मल स्ट्रेस अलॉन्ग वाई एक्सिस और कितने शेयर स्ट्रेसेस है दो एक है हंड्रेड मेगा पासकल ऑन वन फेस और दूसरा कितना है टॉप फेस पे ट्वेंटी एट मेगा ठीक है नाउ द क्वेश्चन से अगर हम इसी एलिमेंट को रोटेट करेंगे बाय एन एंगल थीटा इक्वल फोर्टी डिग्री इफ वी रोटेट दिस एलिमेंट बाय एन एंगल थीटा इक्वल फोर्टी डिग्री रोटेट दिस एलिमेंट बाय एन एंगल थीटा इक्वल फोर्टी डिग्री व्हाट विल बी द स्ट्रेसेस एक्टिंग ऑन दैट वेरी एलिमेंट यानी ये ऐसी बात है अभी आपके पास एलिमेंट जो है यू हैव एन एलिमेंट लाइक दिस नाउ यू रोटेट दिस एलिमेंट बाय एन एंगल थीटा अभी इसको आप अपना एक वेक्टर मानो इसको रोटेट करो बाय एन एंगल थीटा इक्वल फोर्टी दिस इज दिस विल गिव मी डायरेक्शन सो द न्यू वेक्टर विल बी समवट लाइक दिस न्यू न्यू एलिमेंट विल बी समवट लाइक दिस इट विल बी लाइक दिस ओके सो दिस न्यू पिंक एलिमेंट इज फॉर्म्ड फ्रॉम द ब्लैक एलिमेंट बाय रोटेटिंग इट बाय हाउ मच एंगल फोर्टी डिग्री नाउ द क्वेश्चन से हाउ मच विल बी द नॉर्मल स्ट्रेस ऑन दिस एलिमेंट अलॉन्ग एक्स एक्सिस how much will be the normal stress on it along y axis how much will be the shear stress on this face and how much will be the shear stress on this face okay we got the question got the question an element has been rotated how much will be the new combination of normal and the shear stresses so we have two ways of doing it one is mathematical 
okay and your book has shown both the methods can you see your chapter 9 on your screen can no okay this is chapter 9 okay anyways don't worry okay so uh, now the question is how much is this trust so first of all what we do first we write given first we write given we write sigma x is equal to how much sigma x is given as how much 100 mega is it positive or negative positive why is it positive because it's along positive x axis shabash tell me how much is sigma y 34 mpa mega pascal is it positive or negative positive okay we have written this okay now uh, talk about uh, yes you have tau shear stresses now okay uh, i am very sorry the shear stress is given as 28 mega pascal okay sorry it's not 100 it is it is here it's not 100 it's 28 because i yesterday also told you it has to be same on all the pieces why will they turn on sir 28 mp okay now look on the right face look on this face how much is the value of shear stress 28 we write this as tau okay and we write this as tau subscript x and y okay why i will just tell you is equal 28 mega pascal ab mujhe do cheezon ka answer dena hai पहले मैंने इसको टाव एक्स वाई क्यों लिखा और दूसरी बात का जवाब देना है ये पॉजिटिव है या नेगेटिव है देखो इस फेस पे वापस आ जाओ जहां पे 28 मेगा पास लग रहा है ये फेस असल में आपका ऐसे है द फेस इज लाइक दिस सो वी आर ऑन दिस फेस वेयर हाउ मच स्ट्रेस इज एक्टिंग शेयर स्ट्रेस इज एक्टिंग 28 मेगा पास ठीक है इस फेस को आप जरा एक मुझे बताओ ये कौन सा एरिया है ये एक्स एरिया है कि वाई एरिया है कैसे देखते हो आप बाई वेन यू ड्रा द यूनिट नॉर्मल अगर आप इस एरिया को यूनिट नॉर्मल ड्रा करोगे वो किस डायरेक्शन में है एक्स डायरेक्शन में है ना और ये शेयर स्ट्रेस किस डायरेक्शन में लग रहा है वाई डायरेक्शन में तभी हम इस शेयर स्ट्रेस को लिखते हैं टाव शेयर स्ट्रेस एक्टिंग ऑन द फेस पर पेंडिकुलर टू एक्स एक्सिस along y axis we write this as tau x y y tau x y but this is the shear stress acting on the face which is perpendicular to x axis and is acting along y theek hai ye hum nahi abhi hum z ke aur nahi hai kyunki humne z dimension ko negligible kiya otherwise it will be different problem dusri baat hai ab ye positive hai ya negative मैंने कल आपको बोला वो कैसे देखते हैं शेयर स्ट्रेसेस में आपको देखना है व्हाट इज द शेयर स्ट्रेस ट्राइंग टू डू इज इट ट्राइंग टू रोटेट योर एलिमेंट इन क्लॉकवाइज और एंटी क्लॉकवाइज व्हाट इज इट्स नोशन इट इज इन एंटी क्लॉकवाइज देयरफॉर यू विल टेक दिस एज पॉजिटिव ओके लिया आपने इतना देन कैलकुलेशन स्टार्ट योर कैलकुलेशन विल स्टार्ट आवर कैलकुलेशन फर्स्ट वी राइट सिग्मा एवरेज क्या निकालना है सिग्मा एवरेज और मैं आपको हर कोई स्टेप स्टेप की डिटेल दूंगा मैं ऐसा क्यों कर रहा हूं लेट हो सिग्मा एवरेज इज इक्वल सिग्मा एक्स प्लस सिग्मा वाई डिवाइडेड बाय टू लिखा आपने किसके बराबर होगा हंड्रेड मेगा पास्कल यूनिट साथ साथ हा? प्लस थर्टी फोर मेगा पास्कल डिवाइडेड बाई टू वन थर्टी फोर मेगा पास्कल डिवाइडेड बाई टू कितना आएगा Yes, sigma average will be equal one thirty four divided by two two six zero twelve. Yes, it is sixty seven. So, लिखा आपने sigma average कितना है sixty seven mega power. लिखा ठीक है okay. फिर आपको अपनी graph copy उठानी है. You have to take a graph copy. Make use of your graph. अभी graph पे ही करो. घर में आप उसको graph पे करें. Okay. Make it. Take your graph copy. In your graph copy, treat one of the axes as your x-axis. Okay. And another axis, treat it as y-axis.
ठीक है जो आपकी x एक्सिस हैं अलॉन्ग x एक्सिस इन दिस डायरेक्शन यू विल मेजर ऑल द नॉर्मल स्ट्रेसेस व्हिच विल बी पॉजिटिव सो यू विल राइट दिस एज दिस इज पॉजिटिव नॉर्मल स्ट्रेसेस वेदर दे आर अलोंग x एक्सिस और y एक्सिस एंड अलोंग द अपोजिट डायरेक्शन यू विल मेजर द नेगेटिव नॉर्मल स्ट्रेसेस वेदर पॉजिटिव और ah whether along x axis or y axis but negative okay this is minus sigma and along the y axis along the y axis positive y axis you will measure the negative shear stress you will measure the negative shear and along the negative y axis you will measure the positive shear stress ye ye khayal rakhna main har kisi baat ko i will answer your every question but just learn how to draw it okay dekho hamara stress jo hai na wo uske units kya hai pascal mega pascal lekin hame is stress ko plane pe represent karna hai plane pe hum jo bhi distance measure karte hain wo kis mein karte hain centimeter so we should have a conversion scale okay so at the top write your scale this is your choice ye aapki choice hai dekho main scale kaise select karunga but you can select a scale of your choice i will write वन सेंटीमीटर इज इक्वल टेन मेगा पास्कल ठीक है दिस इज माई स्केल दैट इज इफ आई गो टेन सेंटीमीटर अलॉन्ग एक्स एक्सिस इफ आई गो वन सेंटीमीटर अलॉन्ग एक्स एक्सिस यू शुड टेक इट दैट आई हैव मूव टेन मेगा पास्कल ठीक है ओके नाउ टेक यूर सिग्मा एवरेज हाउ मच इज सिग्मा एवरेज सिक्सटी सेवन मेगा पास्कल दिस विल बी हाउ मेनी सेंटीमीटर 6.7. From the origin, move to a distance of 6.7 centimeter. Call this point as point C. Okay, and call this point as this is 6.7 centimeter, and this is 67 mega pascal. Done. Any problem with this? now with c as a center with c as a and you need some radius okay before you before you draw a radius do one more thing now locate your stresses along x and y axis first of all you have sigma x is equal to how much 100 mega pascal and on the face where your sigma x on the face where your sigma x is equal to 100 How much is the value of shear stress on that very face? Twenty-eight mega pascal. Is it positive or negative? It is positive. So along x-axis, I will move how many centimeter? I will move how many centimeter? Ten centimeter. So along x-axis, move ten centimeter. That is now represent the stress acting on the x face. That is hundred comma twenty-eight on your plane. So x-axis से आप कितना आगे जाएंगे? Ten centimeter. और y एक्सिस अपवर्ड्स और डाउनवर्ड्स डाउनवर्ड्स कितने सेंटीमीटर जाएंगे 2.8 पॉइंट एट दैट इज टेन सेंटीमीटर एंड टू पॉइंट एट लोकेट यूर पॉइंट कॉल दिस पॉइंट एज पॉइंट एट एंड राइट डाउन इट्स कॉर्डिनेट्स इट इज हंड्रेड मेगा पासकल कामा ट्वेंटी एट मेगा पासकल दिस इज पॉइंट एट और यहां इस फेस को भी नाम रखो फेस ए लिखा बेटा होगा नाउ गो टू यूर फेस बी On your face B, how much is sigma y? Yes, thirty-four. On your face B, tell me how much is the stress distribution? It is thirty-four normal, and how much is shear? Twenty-eight. Is it positive or negative? Is it positive or negative? Again, see it. It is. Its direction is like this, right? What is it trying to do? It is trying to rotate it clockwise or anti-clockwise. Clockwise, you will take negative. So you have thirty-four comma minus twenty-eight. Zara, apni plane pe ab thirty-four comma minus twenty-eight ko represent kijiye. How you will represent it? Yes, along x-axis you will move how many centimeter? Three point four. And along shear stress axis you will move two point eight. So it will be somewhere here. This we call as a point B. Or isko likho thirty-four comma minus 28. Okay. Now use your 
compass use your compass with c as a center and radius equal to ca equal to cb draw a circle you have to draw a draw a circle this constructs your mohr circle draw a circle okay ki aapne ek circle draw मैं बताऊं ड्रा किया आपने स्केल से मेजर करना वो बराबर ही है ठीक है ओके देखो बेटी अभी हम देखो हफ्सा हफ्सा अभी हम क्या कर रहे हैं ना अभी हम स्टेप्स को फॉलो कर रहे हैं लेकिन ये स्टेप्स कहां से आई है हमें हमने डिस्कस नहीं ठीक है बट इट विल बी प्रूव इन फैक्ट इफ यू टेक अ स्केल दे विल बी सीन ओके फाइन एंड इफ यू सी द रेडियस ऑफ दिस सर्कल दिस इज कॉल्ड मोर सर्कल आई शुड टेल यू हियर दैट द रेडियस ऑफ दिस सर्कल you should validate at your places will be equal to under root of will be equal under root of sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 square plus tau xy square just validate it at your place whether this radius is same equal to this or no kiya aapne samajh aaya अभी जो हमारा मोर सर्कल है ना इट इज इनकम्प्लीट क्यों इनकम्प्लीट है क्योंकि इसमें हमें खाली कौन से दो प्लेन की स्ट्रस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है जो हमें दिए गए थे लेकिन हमें किस प्लेन पे देखना है आ, किस प्लेन पे देखना है जो रोटेट हुआ है बाय एंगल 40 डिग्री क्लॉक और एंटी क्लॉक वाइज क्लॉक वाइज इसने इसके कुर्म क्लॉक वाइज ठीक है कि नहीं ओ सॉरी एंटी क्लॉक वाइज वी रोटेटेड इट एंटी क्लॉक ओके that i will show you tomorrow but now you can play agar ab aap se pucha jaye nahi it is not rotated by 40 it is rotated by 50 you can simply tell us what is it it is not rotated by 50 it is rotated by 30 you can simply tell me what is the stress but first you should construct the mohr's circle okay can you do it at your places but do it on a graph copy okay this question i give as a long type question in your exam okay this is and in your gate exams you have many a questions on this Do you have lab today? When is our lab? Tomorrow. 